You may not agree with uh, my next guest, but the Reverend Barry Downing believes that the Bible contains evidence that God actually used uh, flying saucers, and he may have come to earth on a flying saucer. Uh, there are hundreds of events, according to our guest, uh, that are recorded in the Bible which, which point up and back up his theory. He's published uh, his theories in a book which is called The Bible and Flying Sources. Please welcome, from New York, the Reverend Dr. Barry Downing. <laughs> Dr. Downing, nice to talk to you. Okay, it's good to be here. First up, what led you to believe that the, the Bible contains evidence of, of UFOs? Well, I'd been interested in the relation between science and religion for some time, and when I started looking through the Bible, I started wondering where the angels came from. And I also noticed that there were things reported in the Bible that seemed to be like UFOs, or similar to what we think are UFOs now. Some examples? Well, a good place to start is the book of Exodus, in chapter 13, verses 21 and 22, when Moses was uh, leading the Jews out of Egypt, the Bible says that uh, the Lord went before the Jews in a pillar of cloud by day, that they might travel by day, and a pillar of fire by night, that they might travel by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before the people. Now, what is a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night? It's something that's a cylindrical column. It looks cloud-like during the day. It glows in the dark, and it flies. And in, in my terms, that's a UFO. Uh, this reality, I believe, uh, landed on the ground and caused the burning bush experience of Moses. Uh, the Bible says that the angel of God appeared in the midst of the bush, and the word bush in Hebrew can mean a thicket or a clump of bushes. So I think the pillar of cloud was on the ground, and uh, Moses came near the thicket and heard a voice coming to him from the pillar of cloud, which was now on the ground. Uh, after many plagues came upon Egypt, then the Jews left Egypt, and the pillar of cloud led them right up to the Red Sea. And the Bible says that the pillar of cloud and the fire hovered over the Red Sea and, I believe, used its propulsion system to split the waters so the Jews could escape. And then once the Jews got through the open channel on the other side, the power uh, in the pillar of cloud was turned off and the walls of water collapsed and the Egyptians who had followed into the open channel uh, were now drowned. How do you uh, follow Bible clergymen? Too, that Go ahead. Excuse me? Go ahead. Uh, all right. Moving on. Uh, I believe the uh, pillar of cloud dropped manna for the Jews to eat and then led up to Mount Sinai, where it landed on Mount Sinai, and uh, Moses met the angels of God in the pillar of cloud and fire to receive the Ten Commandments there. Yeah, but the Bible is not saying that, is it? The Bible's not saying what? I'm not saying what you've just said. Well, I think it's all there. If you read, these, uh, if you read the uh, 14th chapter of Exodus, you'll see the pillar of cloud of fire is reported to be there and hovering over the open channel when the parting takes place. But does it specifically describe the, the, the sort of UFOs that you mentioned in your book? Pardon? I couldn't, I couldn't hear that. Does it specifically describe the UFOs that you talk about in your book? Oh yes, the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. I mean, that's word for word in Exodus chapter 13, verses 21 and 22, and then in chapter 14, beginning at verse 19. Yep. I was going to say before, Doctor, how do you fellow clergymen feel about your philosophies? Well, uh, we get mixed reviews. There are some that are open and think that we ought to explore these issues. Uh, more liberal people think that UF, modern UFOs are myth now and that the angels in the Bible were a myth too. In other words, we just made it all up of their minds. Uh, more conservative people are, are nervous because they're not sure where all this will work out if I'm right. Why aren't there miracles today in which God uses UFOs? Well, I think that we may have had some miracles, at least in the 20th century. Uh, the story of the Roman Catholic miracle of Fatima in Portugal on October 13th in uh, 1917 is considered by many UFO researchers to be an example of a modern UFO event. Jacques Vallée in his book Dimensions argues this at great length and he's one of the best known UFO researchers in the world today. But there's no UFO mentioned in that, in that dogma, or well, it's not actually dogma, but in the descriptive uh, passages from the Catholic Church, is it? Well, they don't call it a UFO, but what was seen by over 50,000 people was a, a, a metal-like disc object which was spinning and giving, giving off light and if you read uh, Valet's book, Dimensions, he goes into great detail about all the, 
the uh, symptoms of what happened to this event, and it's very parallel to other UFO stories. Yeah, your, your theories really are very interesting, and the book itself is, uh, is fascinating. And I suppose the one thing in, in reading the book, even though it, it comes as a great shock, surprise to, uh, to most Christians, there's nothing in your book which actually dispels any of the beliefs that people hold already about the Christian faith. You're just explaining, no, aren't I, you, as you see it? No, I, I consider myself a Christian, and I have not written this to disprove the Christian faith. Uh, my view is that uh, the Spirit of God can enter into any human being on earth, and the Bible also says that the Spirit of God is anywhere in the universe. If I ascend to the highest heavens, the Spirit of God is there. So I would assume that if you went to another planet or another universe, these beings in another universe should have the Spirit of God too, and that means they would have the authority to come to earth and uh, teach us God's ways. Dr. Downing, do you believe that, uh, that God is going to come back to earth in a UFO? Well, I think that the angels of God could come back to earth in UFOs. Uh, the Bible says God is spirit. I wouldn't confine my idea of God to a UFO. But I would say that just like uh, any human being can have the Spirit of God, I would say the angels can be human-like and also have the Spirit of God. And I believe the angels could come to earth in uh, UFOs. Is it possible some angels are now living on earth? Uh, quite possibly. There's a uh, passage in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 2, that says, Be sure to entertain strangers, because thereby some have entertained angels unawares, which means that you can see an angel and not know it's an angel. And the reason is that they look very human. Uh, we tend to think that angels have wings. Uh, that's because a lot of artists have painted wings on angels to tell us that angels came down from the skies. They didn't know how else to explain that they got here. But in fact, the book of Hebrews says, uh, if a person knocked on your door wearing a set of wings, you'd be tipped off right away. Aha, we've got an angel here. But that's not how it is. Uh, the angels look very human. They don't have wings. And they come from up in the sky. Okay, well, thanks for talking to us, uh, and uh, good luck with the book. I have got a copy. I haven't got it right here. I've got it in my dressing room. I'll show it before the end of the show. And thanks for your time, Doctor. Okay. All right. Dr. Barry Downing from New York. And the book is called The Bible and Flying Saucers.